G'day, it's Rob here. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I showed you how I made a collet tray and uh, from an old toolbox. And uh, at the time I mentioned, I got a whole lot of spanners chucked in with the old toolbox, which I purchased off a of gum tree, which is like Craigslist. And here's a whole bunch of those spanners mainly, and some sockets. And uh, some of these are quite good old spanners. I mean, there's an old Sid Chrome. I mean, these are collectible these days. People collect tools. And even though I've got a lot of tools from my father, who was a motor mechanic, and because I, I do farming and workshop stuff myself, I've got a pile of tools. So I must have a zillion tools. But you can never have too many tools. And uh, yeah, they're all interesting. That one's interesting. Look, some of these ground the, the corners up to make it fit in. So there's a novel, novel tool. Anyway. Yeah, to cut to the chase, I've got to uh, clean these all up. They're all rust. A lot of them are rusty. And I mean, you can get on the wire, buff and buff away, and you know, you never really get a perfect job on them, or a good job, because some of this stuff's like pitted in, you know, and uh, some of it's seized up. So for jobs like this, I use uh, electrolysis. And I know there's quite a lot of electrolysis videos on YouTube, and I always try and put up videos which are different to everybody else's, you know, touch on subjects that a lot of people don't really look at. But in this case, I'm going to be using electrolysis, so I thought, well, as I'm going to be doing it, I might as well show you how I'd go about doing something like this. And uh, so, if you want to spend the time, I'll, uh, I'll just run through on how I do it. And uh, it's cheap, it's easy, it's not toxic, and uh, yeah, it does a good job. Right, well, what do you need to do this job? Well, first off, you need some washing soda. And this is basically sodium carbonate, which you get from the uh, laundry section of the supermarket. Um, it's just washing soda. You need a battery charger or a power supply of some sort, capable of delivering about one amp at 12 or more volts. You need a bucket and you need a, an anode which is basically uh, something that the uh, rust is going to collect on. And you can see I've used this before, it's all rusty. Uh, and then you're good to go. And water of course, you've got to put some water in the bucket as well. So, how does this work? Well the principle is that you put the, the metal anode in, in the bucket you put your, your rusty old item that you want to de-rust on the other side of the bucket, like that. And you put water in to cover your spanners in this case. So it comes up about where that rusty mark would be. And your battery charger, you hook that up so that the the current will be flowing, remember, uh, in this situation the current will be flowing from negative to positive, which is the reverse of what would happen when, say, you use a torch, uh, where it goes positive to negative. So when, you, when you're actually supplying the power, in this case, it's going to go from negative to positive, and you want to move the rust from the spanners to the anode. So you use the, the negative terminal on the, on the spanners, and the positive goes onto the, the anode, which is where the rust is going to accumulate. So it's going to go negative to positive. And uh, once you set up like that, fill the bucket up to water with water to about there. And then you turn on the power on the battery charger. And then you slowly add washing soda and stir it in until the meter on the battery charger goes up to about one amp. Probably for a bucket that size you'd be putting in about a big teaspoon full of, of washing soda. And you're good to go. Then you just let it run for 24 hours and the rust will move from the spanners, will rush the item across and collect on the, on the anode. The anode is best if it's a fairly something with a fairly big surface area um, that'll work the best, um, and 
after it's been running for a while, the rust will build up and you may have to take it out. you notice the amps will drop back and you may have to take out the anode, rub off the rust and put it back in. The water will go all bubbly and foamy, and uh, but it doesn't matter. The washing soda, soda basically just acts as an electrolyte. And without the washing soda, you will notice there'll be no current flow, virtually no current flow in plain water. But once you add the washing soda, that acts as the electrolyte, that is the electrical conductor. And uh, yeah, you'll see bubbles forming on the spanners and you'll see them moving across. The water will move across, the bubbles will move across, the rust will move across in that direction and, and cling onto that. Okay, that's that bit. What if I haven't got a battery charger, you'll say, I haven't got a battery charger, I'm poor. Well, that doesn't matter. You can still do this with a bit of thought, and all you need is an old power pack from uh, a printer or something like that, which has got about a one amp DC output. In this particular case, I've got an old uh, one for an old Canon BJ whatever printer, and it's rated at supposedly rated at 13.5 volts with a 1 amp output. Quite often you'll find that these are way under undervalued and they actually put out more. More is better, it's not going to hurt. And uh, I've actually measured the output on this thing and I know that it doesn't put out 13.5 volts, it actually puts out 17 volts. Uh, so you're going to have 1 amp DC at 17 volts, well, that's even better. So that should move things along quite nicely. So yeah, all you do is just Cut the end off, pair down the wires, put a couple of bulldog couple of clips on, alligator clips or bulldog clips, hot things on there, and uh, measure to see which is positive and which is negative. Good to go. Salvage, didn't cost you a bean, and you don't need a proper battery charger. Okay, so I'll rig it up now. Uh, I always do this outside the shed. I don't like running the system inside the shed because it gases, and I don't know what sort of gas it is. It could be hydrogen, probably is. But I always put the outside so that, uh, and running at 24 hours, uh, I don't like running stuff in the shed at night unattended. So, uh, yep, put it outside under the eave of the shed, and any gas can dissipate, and you've got no fire problems. And it doesn't use much electricity, the battery charger doesn't get hot that, to that degree, but play safe. So, I'll rig it up outside now. Right, well, here's our bucket of water with our anode, our spanners in there, and you can see I've got the negative onto the spanners, positive onto the anode, and here's our washing soda, here's our battery charger, and the lead going up to the, the power unit outlet on the shed. So now it's just a matter of uh, turn on the power and add the washing soda. Right, well, the power's on. And now I'll just, uh, you can see the meter showing nothing. And now I'll just add a bit of washing soda and, and mix it in. I've used warm water in the bucket to speed things up a little bit. And you can see the meter's coming up already. That was half a tablespoon full. Mix it in. Now the meter's creeping up. Yeah, that was enough. It's mixed in beautifully. Right, you'll see that the the spanner is gassing. You can see the bubbles coming up here and moving around. And it shows that it's working. They're bubbling up and then it's sort of heading over that way. So it'll take a little while to get going, but um, it's working all right. So we'll just let that run for 24 hours. I might clean up that anode a bit and it will probably work a little bit quicker. Uh, my anode's pretty old and buggered. Right, you can see there's plenty of gassing going on now and you can see the uh, Spanners are bubbling away, and uh, the water's moving around. 
and that's how it's going to be. So you just run it for 24 hours like that, and uh, it should take the rust off of there and send it over there. Alright. Well, it's been going for about 16 hours. I had it going overnight, and uh, you can see all the sludgy rust has come to the surface. It was doing something. Uh, but looking at the meter, it's pretty much stopped working, so I think I'll clean the, the anode off, just give it a bit of a rub with a wire brush, and that might reinvigorate it. The actual uh, salts in the water should be enough. You can reuse it, so uh, yeah, I'll clean it up and uh, we'll see if we get a bit more action going for the rest of the day. Just for the hell of it, I... Uh, I converted one of those uh, BJ printer power packs into a uh, into a uh, a charger, a power supply for this uh, particular job. And uh, just to show what they're like, it's putting out 15.56 volts through the solution. So uh, there's obviously going to be some resistance in the solution. So that's pretty good. So that's higher than my battery charger. My battery charger was putting out about 13 volts, so it's a couple of volts actually higher than a battery charger. And the beauty of these old power packs is that they're pretty well sealed against the weather, so you can leave them outside without worrying about the rain getting in them. Uh, I had to cover up my charger last night because it has been wet weather, and you can see it's all froth and bubble in there. And also with those power packs, you'll see it's got a, a white, one wire's got a white line on it. Well, that's the positive, so... Um, Yep, so when you put your terminals on, just put your uh, positive clip or mark it in some way and just use that, that white wire for positive and uh, you're good to go. So we'll let it go for another, I don't know, four or five hours. I turned the spanners around in the bucket and I cleaned off the, the plate and uh, yeah, it's going good. So there you go. Just gives you an old Canon BJ printer or something similar uh, power pack with a, a one amp. DC um, output and the more volts the better so in this case it's 17 or 18 volt all right we'll come back a little bit later well it's been going for 24 hours so now we'll take it out and scrub it with a bit of with a Brillo pad you can use steel wool whatever you want to use but something like that I've got gloves on not because it's toxic to that degree but because I don't want to get black crap on my uh, on my fingers so there they are, after being in the, in the tub for 24 hours. And we'll rinse them off in the bucket. So I'll show you what they look like after I scrub them up. You can see here where I've briefly gone over the old seed crane that you saw that was all black and most of it's just rubbed off with the, with the Brillo pad. And the same with this one here. So uh, that's why I've got gloves because the water goes black. See, here's one here that's just come straight out. Look at that. Looks pretty grotty. Let's get on it with the with the brillo pad. You can see it's rubbing the, the black that's left. It puts a black oxide coating on it. Give it a rub with brillo pad or pot scrubber and it's coming off no problem get the worst off like that and then finish off on the wire buff and uh, but you can see it's doing a good job you know that was all buggered like that and the old electrolysis just uh, converts it loosens it up and it will take off paint as well um, it's, it's the way to do it cuts down a lot of uh, lot of a lot of time and work. So there you go, you can see how it's it's scrubbing up. And as I said, finish off with a wire buff. And uh, just a light wire buff over at the end just to have a lot of rubbing. So they're coming up pretty good. And you can see this tub's just an old Pickle bar, pickle tub cut down. 
You can see how black the water is from all the crap off of it. So that's it. That's all there is to it. And uh, I'll wire, wire buff a couple of these up and just show you how well they come up. But I mean, you would have seen that old suit crime was black as hell, and now it's looking good. So I'll run a couple over the buff and give you a look at them. So here we go. We'll just uh, wire buff these up. I'll do the old suit crime that we saw originally. How's that, eh? Pretty good. So our old Sid Chrome looks, well, apart from a bit of wear, it looks as good as new. So that's how the old electrolysis works. I'll just finish the ends in there with a, a small wire brush just to sort of get that last little bit out. I'll have a narrow one in there, but so yeah, um, that's all there is to it. Electrolysis works great, Stave saves a lot of hard buffing, I mean that was just very light buffing. Once again if you do this sort of work always wear goggles, eye protection in case you splash any of the salty water in your eyes and also particularly when you're using a wire buff always use gloves, eye protection and I always wear a, a welding uh, apron uh, so you don't get your clothes all filthy but uh, there you go, that's it folks, electrolysis Works a treat, so it's a lot of hard work. Doesn't use much electricity, and it's very cheap. You know, washing sodas cost peanuts. All right, that's it. See you next time. Cheers.